All right, so you're probably wondering why the Cobra's still here after all this time. Well, the customer wanted some custom rims for the FIA style from the back in the day that this car is. Um, water and powder coated, and they took quite some time to get here. So right now I'm just doing some checks to make sure the current um, knockoff system works with these, which they do. Um, that's how we order them. But speaking of old friends, look what's back. The Lotus, as promised, um, it's, you know, when you do your own projects like this that are something you're not going to sell, something that's not going to make money, is it's going to be more of a marketing piece um, and show off piece for the shop. They tend to hit the back, board, or hit the, uh, back burner a little more often than usual um, because we've got all these customer cars in here and, of course, the Trans Am back there. So we're back on it, though. Um, probably doesn't look very different because all the big components were in there. But what you do see is a lot more rainbow of colors. Um, we're getting all the wiring in here. It's really been done as far as components for a while. Um, doing the final wiring has just kind of been the thing that we kind of set it aside to finish up some other projects. But back on it, Austin's starting to clean some stuff up, get some wires ran up into the front. Um, you know, the, the accessory time right now, it's heater, air conditioner, getting the heat pump or the um, vacuum pump installed, stuff like that. Um, outside of the main drivetrain system has kind of been where we've been focused on the last couple weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's getting close, right? Yeah, definitely getting there. Um, a lot of wiring just for the small accessory stuff that takes a lot of time to get right. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, so um, pretty much Got everything planned and in. Now it's just cutting wires, putting connectors on, wiring things up, and turning the key and hoping for the best. So, but on that note, let's switch over to the heater because we got to talk about that. All right, so here's the heater core. If you think of heater cores on cars, you usually see them when you pop the hood, and right there on the firewall, you got a big old, you know, block of just plastic which has the heater core in it, sometimes air conditioning. Um, all that good stuff is up, you know, right there, you take some bolts off and boom, you're, you have access to it all. This one is a little different, and I don't know where Austin wants to talk about it, but, um, it looks small, right? It looks easy. Well, yeah, this is kind of, it yeah. is what it is, but. Yeah, fits on there like that. And it's a small unit, but, <laughs> Austin, what do you think? Um, how many hours do we have in this? Get, a lot. Just getting it out. We haven't put a it lot. back in yet. Yeah, the big struggle with this is like the dash isn't easily removable like most cars are. And I mean, dashes aren't easily removable for the most part, but like this one's really not removable. Mm -hmm. And so most of the interior came apart just to get it accessible, to get it to wiggle, and then came apart a little further to get it actually out. Yep, I'm, I'm finally healing a few cuts on my hands from like a few weeks ago just from so many things it's lots of metal up under there which is nice you know instead of plastic stuff that breaks but that whole dash is like built into the car on this design so you can't just take this dash cover off and take it out which you know is nice because then once we take that out of a normal car you have the firewall the inside of the firewall there and all the stuff on it and stuff's easily accessible like the heater core well this is converting to an electronic high voltage heater core. So what's changing is we're taking out this one because it runs off of the engine coolant, which, you know, an engine gets 180, 190 degrees. Um, and that's a pretty nice temperature for um, air to blow through to, to, cool, to warm you up in the winter when it's, when it's cooler out. Well, you don't have that kind of temperature with the battery pack. You know, we have coolant in here for the battery, so that's more to keep them at an ambient, much lower temperature. Um, you're not going to get any heat out of that when, when it's the winter. Um, so you have to use an electric and it's high voltage. You can't just heat things up with a 12 volt. Um, think of like an electric heater in the house, you know. You plug that into a 120 volt 
um, outlet. So same goes here. You have to get high voltage from the back, the pack here through a junction box and a contactor that when you turn it on, it turns that contactor, completes the, the high voltage circuit. And then this literally is just, if it's got electricity, it's on. If it doesn't, it's off. Um, but as you can see here, this is much bigger than this. So that's the next thing is trying to figure out how we want to get this in here. Um, you know, do we want to just mount it on top of this one and keep it all original, which would work. Uh, or do we want to take that one out and try to make a bracket to make it all work? It's going to be interesting to say the least. So, um, and then he's putting it back in because he took it all out and he knows what all came apart where. You still remember all that? Unfortunately. It was a lot. <laughs> it was just day after day of like more parts sitting outside the passenger door. More parts, more parts, just taking stuff out. It was, it was quite the hassle to get this out, but it's out. Pretty much um, everything. I think we like took a break for a week from the Lotus when we got this out because we're like, all right, we just not look at this thing. But yeah, that's the story on the heater core. All right, so I'm going to save you the trouble explaining how the uh, heater core and air conditioning unit box went back in. It went in just about as bad as it came out. So we'll just leave it at that. But now onto the other things as far as the accessories for this. So. We got rid of the radiators up front because you know we don't need those. We're using two remote radiators to cool the um, controllers and the batteries. <clears throat> but there's also uh, you know the, the air conditioning condenser up there, and as you can see here, quite large. <clears throat> it didn't fit when we put the two batteries up front because you know we had two batteries that are going up front that are being mounted up there. They those two batteries and this just did not work. So. We had to source, and I don't even remember where it's from, because I stopped guessing where all this stuff was from, Nissan, Toyota, Chevy, Ford, whatever. I think it might be a Chrysler uh, minivan, though. But either way, um, this is what we found. And as you can see here, much smaller in comparison between the two. So this fits up there with new electric fans. Of course, the electric fans that were made for this don't fit this. Um, all this fits under there nice and easy. Well, somewhat easy. I built some brackets for it. But gets us our air conditioning condenser and fan. Um, and yeah, that's kind of just what we needed uh, for the air conditioner to work. But there's some other things we had to kind of fabricate up. So let's go check that out. See this little box right here? This is a secondary uh, kind of junction box for our accessories. So our heater and our air conditioning is in here. When you turn a switch on in there, it's, it's powered by 12 volt, connects you know the 12 volt to this contactor right here, whether it's the heater or the air conditioner, it completes that um, high voltage circuit. And with the heater, as long as you've got the fan on in, the, you know, you've got a different switch for the fan speed you turn the fan on and you turn this high voltage contactor on, it supplies a high voltage to the heating element in there, warms the air up that's being blown through, and you got a heater. Much simpler than the air conditioner. The air conditioner has a few other 12 volt signals going around doing different things, but it's kind of the same thing here with this contactor. Um, the compressor runs off of high voltage instead of a belt. So when you turn that switch on there, it'll turn on a few things but there's a master um, kind of ECU for the air conditioner here that kind of takes care of everything um, but this gets you the high voltage into the uh, into the compressor there so that's kind of our accessory stuff as you can see you know we've got open-end wiring here so button up a few of those things but that's pretty much for accessories I mean we've got cooling done AC batteries are going in we're getting there to uh, kind of final wiring and getting this thing officially officially rolling so we'll catch that in the uh, next video thanks for watching like share and subscribe like out and subscribe boom nailed it <laughs>